George Bruno and the 21 Report. We're at the 21 Convention, the final event of the decade, and I'm having a conversation with Stefan Arnio. Welcome. Thanks for having me, George. Absolutely. That was a great presentation. You just came off the stage. What is your impression of the audience and of the event so far? I love the event. Uh, very high quality men, uh, diverse group of guys. I was doing my own research watching, I think, the top three videos that Anthony sent me. And it seems like you guys like talking about picking up chicks. So I had to put some picking up girls in the presentation. And then, and then I noticed that no one this year is speaking so much about money. So I, st I brought the money and the real estate to the table a little bit. And I thought it was a good match mm -hmm. to bring the money and the girls. Because yeah. without, without women, there's no reason to get money. Right. Right. I thought it was a good pairing. Thank you. It was, uh, you know, how you pair wine with certain meals. <laughs> I feel that, that your speech was a very good pairing. And uh, talking to a lot of guys on the way up here to the studio, most of them really loved it. That's yeah. great. There was a visual, too. I would see guys, and I'm like, so what did you think? They go, <laughs> they did this, <laughs> like their mind was blown kind of thing. And I thought, wow, good, good. That said it all. Well, you know, I had to cram, yeah. I had to cram a 16-hour Hard Times Create Strong Men book into an hour, and then I split it up with the Oracle, my new book, the Oracle, the Queen, the Princess, and the Horse. Yeah. So I wanted to bring, what is that, 20, 30 hours of content into an hour. Mm -hmm. That's hard to do. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and somehow I finished it right on the nose. Yeah, fantastic. All right, well, rather than talking about the presentation, uh, because that people will see that video right and digital is forever so people are going to be watching that for the next 5 10 15 20 years let's talk about some other things you're an author you've written a lot of books tell me about the first book you wrote and the most recent book great so my first book i wrote was this one here money people deal and it was 2011 i went i was a struggling young entrepreneur so I was that oh my gosh 7 years ago so i was in my mid 20s and i had some success I owned, you know, some buildings and I had some passive income and I was starting to flip houses and stuff. And I went to this seminar and this guy said, hey, you got to learn to write a book. And I thought, oh, well, I, I'm, I have an English degree. And, you know, I'm thinking, oh, well, I can write and sure, why not? So I ended up buying this $3,000 how to write a book course. And I went home and it sat on the shelf and I didn't do anything with mm -hmm. it. And then finally, somehow I got fed up and I took, I ended up writing 120 blogs in 120 days. And I took the top 30 blogs, made into this book called Money People Deal. And uh, within the year, I raised $5 million of capital for my real estate deals. Mm -hmm. uh, that book launched my coaching company, my education company, which is you know, my passion now. And then uh, it sold over 20,000 copies. And I'm from Canada, Canadian bestseller is 3,000 copies. We've done 20,000 copies in mm -hmm. Canada. So it's been a real success to, to build a platform off of a book like mm -hmm. that. Teach people how to raise money, how to how to build a real estate portfolio. Then my newest book, uh, it's the Hard Times series. So Hard Times Create Strong Men is the first book in that series, all about power and being a man. Yes. The second book in the series is this one, Dead Man Walking. It's all about darkness. Mm -hmm. The third one's about demons, and the last one's about ethics and women. That's the Oracle, the Queen, the Princess, and the Whore. So I ended up with this Hard Times project. Never planned on writing about men, uh, but I found that the men were so screwed up, so weak didn't have fathers and I just I just been doing this out of a labor of love and passion it's great to come here and talk to you guys because mm -hmm. this is the perfect audience for mm -hmm. the hard times project yeah yeah as far as um, recruiting men for learning you're you are a huge proponent and a student yourself you invested a lot in yourself you mm -hmm. continue to do so and you ask men to do that for themselves. What can a man do by, uh, when he invests in, in himself with your product, your training, yep. what does he get out of it? Well, it depends. I mean, at the, at the lowest level, guys are just getting books. You know, a mm -hmm. book or an audio book, if you're a guy who don't have a lot of money, a book or an audio book is a great thing to mm -hmm. open the mind, mm -hmm. right? It's almost like an appetizer. Yeah. If guys want to get a little more serious, maybe they come to an event like 21 convention or one of my classes. We do four classes a year. We teach uh, how to get started with real estate investing. I don't have a hard times class yet. I might end up making one. Who knows? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then at the top level, we do very high service coaching. And those those classes start or those packages start at nineteen thousand, go to seventy three thousand. Mm -hmm. 
But those classes, I mean, the starter ones is we literally walk you through getting your first deal done with none of your own money, real mm -hmm. estate deal. So you'll make, you spend 20, but you'll make 30 or 40. Mm -hmm. And then the top level, I coach, uh, they're called platinum students, and they do a dozen deals a year. So if somebody wants to be a full-time investor, we mm -hmm. can get you to that point. Mm -hmm. And I've got some students who are taking home a million dollars a year. So mm -hmm. my top students are taking home that. Mm -hmm. uh, other top students are making three, 400 grand, but they're doing work. You know, those guys are... They take, it's almost like a cake mix. They take the cake mix home, they add the water, they add the eggs, mm -hmm. they put it in the oven, mm -hmm. and they get it. If you buy the cake mix and you don't make the cake mix, you're not going to call it Betty Crocker. And yeah, like, right. Betty, what's up? You know, you got to put in the work. Sure, sure. Who was your biggest influence? Oh, man. I've had so many over the years. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mentioned on stage that um, when I was 21, I was really struggling. I had divorced parents, so I had a weak dad. He never could measure up, um, and I started studying and, and getting hungry and reading a lot. My mother taught me to read. She said, read every day before bed. That was just, that was the deal. So I started reading and reading. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Changed my life. Mm -hmm. And I had five grand in the bank. I'd saved up as a guitar teacher, and I had five grand in the bank. So I ended up spending that on seminars. I put myself $10,000 in debt to go see Bill Bartman, and he's one of the top entrepreneurs of all time. He's on the same list as Henry Ford. Mm -hmm. And I spent a week with Bill Bartman. It was 10 grand mm -hmm. to go. And I did not have the money to go at all. I was staying at a five-star hotel. I bought myself a lobster club sandwich at the, at the restaurant because I wanted to taste what it was like to be rich. I wanted yeah. to stay there. And I remember I bought this lobster, lobster club. It was like a $17 sandwich. And I see Bill Bartman behind the stage eating a $5 foot long from Subway. It gave me some context, right? Because yes. this billionaire is yes. eating a ham sandwich from Subway. I'm eating this lobster club and I realized, wow, you know, the rich guys, he's rich, but he's frugal too. So it was a, that was a really great experience. It reminds me of Trump who loves McDonald's. Yeah. And KFC. He's eating KFC on his plane and yeah. McDonald's. And you know, it's, why not? The, the Big Mac is a great burger, you yeah. know, so why not? Yeah. So it, it was a really great experience because what happened was years later when I actually had the money to stay at that hotel, I went back and I stayed there and I actually belonged. I could actually mm -hmm. afford it. But back then, I always say this to people, I say, go get a really expensive hotel room somewhere, 700 bucks a night, 500 bucks a night, and taste it. Taste that life, and you go home, and you've got the taste in your mouth, and you're going to work harder now. Mm -hmm. Reminds me, when I was in Poland, I got upgraded to business first class, and it was just phenomenal, just unlimited everything. I just had my own little concierge flight attendant. Yeah. And I thought it was a random thing, then I thought about it for a second, I'm like, there is a method to this madness because it makes flying anything less suck. It does suck. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what I said to my assistant? I said, look, I'm 33 now. Put me in first class, business class. I don't even care how much it costs now because I just don't want to be in the cattle car in the back where everyone's farting all the time. Like cattle put me car. put me in the, the first class and even hotels now. I used to stay at the, the Hojo, the Howard Johnson, the yeah. shitty hotels. Yeah. And now I'm like, Give me the nice hotel. I'll spend yep. the money. Like, I'm 30. Mm -hmm. I'm hurting a little bit. Let's get something nice. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know? Sure. What's next for you? Oh, man, George, that's a, that's a big question. Well, we're starting to license out the Black Card uh, University for people who want to create their own coaching company. So we're starting to license that out. I'm probably going to do another two books this winter. I'm going back to the jungle, do another 40-day fast this winter. What um, jungle? Costa Rica. So I'll be in Costa Rica, not eating for 40 days, just having water. I'm probably going to pump out another two books in the next six months. And then I'm, I'm doing a, a media tour and a PR tour. I'm just promoting hard times. And I've got to figure out what is next. I'm thinking mm -hmm. maybe a private mm -hmm. equity fund, maybe a hard times class. I'm, I've been in this. I got destabilized. I had cancer last year. Yeah. And uh, the doctors told me I'd be dead in two weeks. And mm -hmm. I went to the jungle and fasted. That was a big gamble. And I ended up coming out on the other side. But it kind of smashed my goals it smashed my vision it smashed a lot of things in the last year i've been kind of floating a little bit i grew a beard i grew my hair out i look handsome on the front of this magazine but i'm a jungle man now and i think there's kind of like you said there's a method to the madness like there's a reason for all this to happen mm -hmm. and i think part of it is uh making me think bigger and getting me out of my little town of winnipeg mm -hmm. i think i'm gonna spend half my time in la next year and half mm -hmm. in winnipeg so I don't know, man. I'm in this like space. I'm doing a lot of spiritual work. I got to yeah. clean, clean this up. You yeah. Know? I watched um, Grant Cardone grow 
to what he is today. And it's amazing. And it happened in the past five years. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the grant that he is now. And a lot happened in five years. An awful lot happened. So I don't think he, I think five years ago, I don't think he would have even imagined that what he is now. I, I don't even think that was on the, on the blackboard. Yeah, well, that, and that's, that's the thing. I, I'm, I'm keeping myself open. I got this diagram on the back of Dead Man Walking, and this is God channeling through man. It, mm -hmm. it makes his heart shape, which mm -hmm. is unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm kind of open to the channeling of that. I know I'm going to go on a 40-day fast. Every year I fast, and I completely change everything. So I'll come out of the jungle after listening to the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, and I'll probably have some brilliant ideas, and I'll have a very clean body, and... You know, everything will be great. But, uh, you know, I, I commend Grant. He's done a lot of work mm -hmm. on himself. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm even going to do some of the things he did. I saw yeah. him speak in August in L.A. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got to hear the real story, the mm -hmm. story he tells off mm -hmm. the camera. And yeah. Real, real big balls on that guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he burned the ships, no doubt about <laughs> yes. it. He burned the ships. <laughs> yes. That's what, you know, there was no, no turning back. Mm -hmm. uh, two or three weeks ago, I went to see uh, Dan Pena at University of Pennsylvania, yeah. another interesting fellow. Love him. Do you know much about him? You know what? Uh, I was hanging out with Jason Capital mm -hmm. in L.A. I don't know if you know Jason. He's a student mm -hmm. of Dan Pena. And then uh, Dan Locke, another friend of mine, is yeah. a student of Dan Pena. And uh, I, I've seen his clip where he says, I got some vagina cream. You put it on your vaginas because yeah. Yeah, you're a bunch of pussies. Yeah. And, you know, I like him because he yeah. tells it how it is. And mm -hmm. I, I aspire to be like Dan Pena one day. I'll be that old man yeah. telling you to, you know, reach down and tell me if you feel a pair of balls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was interesting because we've seen this really tough Dan. And then uh, he went for about a good two hours at Penn. And then he says, well, I guess I have to stop because my wife over there is giving me dirty looks. And I'm like, ah. Oh. And that was refreshing. It was like he went from Dan Pena to being a husband. Right. And, it, and he wasn't being like, you know, this wussy kind of guy. He was being a considerate man. Right. And, you know. He was reading the Oracle. The he Oracle was, told absolutely. him. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And I thought that was really interesting. She's giving me dirty looks, so I need to cut this short now. So, and I thought that was really neat. And, and they stayed around and shook everyone's hand, and that was kind of cool. Uh, women. Let's talk about women. All right, man. Let's do it. Yeah. The 21 convention started out, I joke around as a, uh, you know, I say it was like a how to get laid seminar, which I think can be taught in like two hours. Get laid, get paid, live forever. That's what we all want. That's it. Right? That's, That's it. it. But a whole weekend, three or four days talking about that, I just think it creates a one-sided man. And we've evolved, and now we have spiritual, we have ethical, we have moral speakers, we have Socrates got up and spoke on how to change a diaper. I mean, wow, you know, so many different things have happened, and it's evolved. Uh, what do you see as the future of men's events like this? Well, I think there's four parts. There's the physical, there's mental, spiritual, emotional, right? So I like the fact that they're making it a little more well-rounded because picking up chicks and slaying pussy, that gets you so far. Like I had eight girlfriends at one point. I went into the PUA, the pickup artistry, yep. and I was also a hardcore salesman and a traveling speaker yep. and a hardcore negotiator. I have books written on all that stuff, yeah. selling and negotiating. And a man can kill himself with that stuff. Like actually, it's like it's as yep. dangerous as heroin or alcohol. Yes, like, it is. Super dangerous. So. I actually, that's actually part of how I got cancer was I fell in love with one of those eight girls. She had a boyfriend the whole time, didn't tell me about it. So for three years, I'm chasing this girl. And I looked in the mirror, I said, I want to die. Cancer one week later. Isn't that something? If you want to die, you will die. And I'm convinced of that now is when you want to die, you'll die. When you want to live, you'll live. And that's bar none. Like, you'll just do it. And so I think, you know, in hard times, create strong men. I talk about what is a man in money, sex, religion, politics. And I think that there is more rounding out of men now you know mm -hmm. talking about those four topics those are the hard topics that stefan molyneux will, ta will tackle or you know even jack donovan he has some spicy stuff yes i does. i got lots of spicy stuff we didn't go too spicy today i kept mm -hmm. it kind of mm -hmm. you know basic but i think that 
what I love about what you guys are doing here is that the conversations here are those father to son conversations that aren't happening anymore. I said on stage, you know, this this con this convention shouldn't exist because the we father should... taking the son out in the garage. Yeah, in the yes. garage, yeah. and and yeah. we should have men's groups locally where. I go to the Winnipeg, whatever, and you go to the Florida, whatever, whatever the local thing is, and the men would get together. And that is that has been systematically destroyed mm -hmm. in the last 50 years, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is a very important thing. Now, here's the sad part is the guy's got to fly. It costs money. Guys are afraid of that, but you do have the online platform. So I'm glad the conversation is going towards these more difficult topics. And I'm glad that I think society itself is starting to open up. Like, Ellen DeGeneres recently, she had the George Bush thing. Her and George Bush were sitting together and she said, look, we're having a discussion. I might not agree, but we're having a discussion. Thank God there's a discussion. Mm -hmm. Because money, sex, religion, politics, people don't talk about those. But what I'm finding right now in the marketplace is men and women are searching for meaning. Mm -hmm. And meaning has been lost because we mm -hmm. took religion out. Mm -hmm. Okay, We took the Judeo-Christian roots out of society. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, even some new religions like Scientology, they're like, they banish that. That's mm -hmm. the last religion you can mm -hmm. be prejudiced towards on the whole face of the earth. Yeah. So they took Scientology away. They took Christianity away. They took Islam away. They took, well, Islam is cool right now. But they took everything away, so there's no religions. Mm -hmm. And now man is struggling to find meaning. Mm -hmm. Woman is struggling to find meaning. Mm -hmm. And that's where the Hard Times series is coming in is I'm talking about the power, darkness, demons, and ethics of humanity. And it's it's freaky it gives me chills because it's almost what a religion would be talking about mm -hmm. but it's not a religion mm -hmm. and it's the stuff that's in the bible like this is actually i get guys saying this is the second best book after the bible mm -hmm. well dude it actually is like the bible but it's not you know thou art mm -hmm. and written yeah. in yeah. this middle english it says fuck shit and piss yeah and has naked girls yeah and it's funny church people like that the, the religious community likes it but they don't like the rated R nature of it. But dude, the Bible was rated R. 100%. There is like incest and sodomy and killing and genocide and slavery, sure. like all this dark stuff. But I think that what's happened with the Christians or with the religious people is they only show the good side of Christianity. They don't want to talk about the darkness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what's cool about this is I like that we come here and we can talk about the darkness and the stuff that, you know, maybe they don't want to talk about on the mainstream TV or they don't want to talk about on YouTube and they're getting shadow banned. And I appreciate that you guys have security and guns and you know, secret location. That means, when, I, when Anthony told me that, I never heard of this convention. And Anthony told me that, I was like, fuck yeah, I'm in. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a bit of danger. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, you were surrounded by more firepower than you can ever imagine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. And, man. you know. You've been surrounded by firepower since you walked in the door. Oh, I, I love some of these speakers. You know, Jack Donovan and uh, Stefan Mullen, you showed up to them. I got them as sources in hard times. Mm -hmm. And it's cool because I binged out on Stefan Mullen one summer. I said to him, I said, dude, I binged out on your stuff one summer. Was all I did mm -hmm. was just, I just watched his stuff and I ate butter chicken in my apartment. Yeah. And that was it. And then, you know, Jack Donovan, I binged out on his books too. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's incredible guys. And it's really cool. I'm one of their peers now i'm on the stage with them which is yes. super cool because yeah it's interesting isn't it when you go from reading someone's books to sharing a stage with them mm -hmm. never would have imagined that but i also kind of felt and this is that goes back to that belief of living or dying i remember i had the belief i want to be on stefan's show well stefan was just on my podcast he has my book now, i so saw i'll probably I saw be the on podcast. his podcast yeah. it was great Awesome. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we yeah. got to talk about him, which he never gets to talk about. He's interviewing someone else, and yeah. we got to hear the truth of Stefan Molyneux. Yeah, that was a good good broadcast. Loved it. Yeah. What is the pain in your life? Oh, what dude. is the wound in your life? Well, I think I suffered from things that other men have suffered from. Uh, for the first part of my life, well, from about my teenage years, I suffered from my parents' divorce. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was 17 and my mom was like, hey, I'm divorcing your dad. And I actually feel like I caused that because what happened was I went to work with my dad and mm -hmm. I came home and I complained about my dad. I said, mom, dad works like four hours a day and I don't understand what he's doing. And we had this like female bitch fest, me and mm -hmm. her. I was a teenage boy. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. If I go back in time, I'd slap myself. Mm -hmm. And so my mom ended up divorcing my dad because he wasn't really working. He wasn't making money, all this stuff. And um, that divorce, I remember I said, it's okay, I'm 17, I'm an adult, I can take it. 
And that fucked me up hard, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think at any age of divorce with your parents, it ruins your archetypes. So you're perfect man, you're perfect woman, no matter what age, when you find out that's untrue, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it destabilizes you. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another thing that really shattered me was I was engaged to a girl when I was in my mid twenties. I loved her. You know, I was her first kiss. I was her, took her virginity. I loved her, loved her, loved her. Her dad had a lot of abuse in her mm -hmm. and we got engaged, bought her a house, took her to Disneyland, Disney world, four trips a year, did everything for this girl. And I ended up, um, it, it did, the wheels fell off the bus. And I ended up with a broken heart, and I became a merciless womanizer. Mm -hmm. Horrible womanizer. Yeah. And I had eight girlfriends. The pendulum went in the other direction. Oh, yeah. I became, I call it the dark knight. Mm -hmm. You know, men are uh, slaves, warriors, knights, kings. I became the dark knight. I had power, I had money, I could travel, I could fly in different girls on different days. Mm -hmm. I'd have one leaving the back of the hotel, mm -hmm. I'd have a different one in the front, and I became a very, very bad man. And then that manifested into cancer. And then I'm here now. So I've, I've been, I said on stage, I've been to the bottom in money, almost bankrupt. I've been to the bottom in relationships, you know, where you want to die. I've almost been dead three times in the last year. So I'm running out of stuff to be afraid of, George, because like mm -hmm. I've actually broken everything and mm -hmm. fixed it all now. So we're running out. It reminds me of the movie. One of my favorite movies of all time came out probably four or five years ago called La Grande Bellezza, The Great Beauty, an Italian film yeah. about a man who... He, he created the social scene. Like Social scenes in Rome would not exist if it wasn't for him. Mm. And he turns 60 years old and he realized, wow. I mean, he had rooftop parties and he was the man. And it was about his uh, come to Jesus moment. Mm. And he had a friend who, uh, he was with a, a buddy who didn't have two nickels to rub together. And, and the man uh, said, well, I, I gotta go now. Um, you know, and we're gonna we're gonna watch TV. Me and my wife are just gonna watch our favorite show on TV. And then this man who was the life of Rome, you just see his face sink because he just wanted to veg on the couch and watch a show with a woman that he loved. But he had a hundred women, people chasing him everywhere. Yeah. But he envied his simple friend who just wanted a sandwich and to sit with the woman that he loved. And it was just, if you get a chance to watch the movie, uh, it's profound. Well, Someone like you will extract so much out of this. Dude, I mean, I, I watched this other movie, Phantom Thread. You ever see that one? Yes. Yeah, Phantom Thread. I'm watching Daniel that Day movie. Lewis. Yeah, I'm watching the movie with my mom at her house. This is when I had cancer. Yeah. So I just had my colon cut out, and I got a freaking poop bag hanging from me, and I'm watching this with my mom. And my mom loved that, because she could just lord over me. Yeah. And we're watching the Phantom Thread. And I'm looking at this, and this is a rich guy. He's got a castle in England. He's making the dresses for the richest women. He's got yeah. all these people working for him. He's a rock star. And I think he has his like ex-wife working for him, and she's sitting at the table, and she yeah. like, you know, she's like, "Don't put that there." And he's got his little whore that he got from like at the diner or whatever. Yes. And I'm watching this, and I'm like, "God damn!" Like I'm watching my myself, like this master of this one thing, mm -hmm. and he can't just get the basics of life. Like yes. the guy's a rock star. But he's like, you know, it's like a savant. Like he plays the most beautiful piano, but pisses his pants while he's playing the piano because yeah. he can't do the basics. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm feeling this mm -hmm. guy right now. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> so that, that, was, that was a very profound move. I'm surprised that it didn't go further than it did. Uh, it's a tough time. I mean, it's, it was a great film. Like it was a film, not a movie. Yeah. Right, you know, people are watching the Avengers or the fucking fifth Spider-Man make. Like, oh, we're gonna watch Spider-Man start out for the fifth time. Yeah. He's black yeah. now and disabled. Yeah. You know, every type of Spider-Man. But Phantom Thread, man, that was that was a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. What advice would you give to someone who's got the Doritos encrusted fingertips and uh, living either in the mom's basement or in a flop house somewhere, some little rat hole of an apartment, and he has a little spark of desire but doesn't really believe in himself. And he's sitting right there, actually. Right there. In that camera. He's right inside there. Talk to that man. Give him some hope uh, in the Stefan way. Well, I, I mean, it sounds self-serving, but I tell him to read Hard Times, Create Strong Men, and 
I get testimonials every day from men who go, wow, I've been banging my girlfriend for eight years. I'm finally going to marry her after reading Hard Times. Wow, I couldn't get a job. Now I'm on my purpose. So you know, that book, I would say get Hard Times, Create Strong Men, start investing in yourself. Um, you know, if you're living at mom's house, move out at all costs. It'll wake you up. I mean, that's what, that's what you need, bro, is a wake-up moment. And Hard Times, Create Strong Men is that hard dad talk that you probably haven't got in a while or ever got it. So get started with a hard talk and let's go. Slaying your personal darkness, climbing to the top of the mountain. We talked about that today. A conversation with Stefan Arneo. Thank you, sir. Thanks, George. Appreciate you. What was your experience so far with the 21 convention? Oh, outstanding. Outstanding. Professional, all across the board. Really good energy with a lot of people, and uh, I just like it because it's a very positive, uh, positive direction. This, uh, George, this, is a, this has been a first class event. It's fantastic, you guys are in a really tight ship. I've been to a lot of conventions over the course of my business career, and I can tell when things are well run and when things aren't, and this is a very well run operation. I was very impressed. It's pretty incredible to see where Anthony's brought it, especially from last year, which is my first year here, and to see the, the upgrades he's made has been incredible. I've got my notebook, and with every speaker, I've written down about two or three lines mm -hmm. under each of the speakers of just, just the key prime stuff that I got. That's good. That's good. Great. It's, it's very surreal, man. I'm yeah. really enjoying it. I'm happy to live in such an era where such a thing like this is possible. I have never seen a group of guys like this, a group of 200 men who are focused, squared away, and working on their values, just never met a bigger group of wonderful guys. It's kind of neat because I've been to a fair amount of conventions in my day, but you never see one where the guys like, uh, here you can just see Ed Lattimore talking to Tanner about boxing. Yeah. You sit down and then you tell your boxing experiences, everybody's kind of pinging off each other. It's yeah. nice. It has been fantastic. And it's been four days of guys all on the same page, working in the same direction. Fascinating meeting some of the people, hearing their stories. You got, you got people traveling from other parts of the world to come here just to see yeah. some of the speakers. That's yeah. amazing. The thing that's impressed me is everybody here is very serious. Yeah. They're taking it you know, close to their heart. What a great convention. Thanks, George.